Hello, hello, welcome to Solving with AWS Solutions, your deep dive into reference architectures built by AWS that are ready to deploy instantly in the cloud. I'm Rob, your host, joined today with Rock and Rakshana. Hey, Rakshana, how are you? Hey, Rob, happy to see you. Today, we're going to talk about IoT Device Simulator Solution, a solution that helps you to easily simulate over hundreds of connected devices to test your device integration for IoT services. That's right, customers tell us that they want to innovate and build serverless IoT applications, but struggle to test them without a large connected pool of devices. Right, because you know this meant having to configure and manage hundreds of devices or to develop time-consuming scripts. But this problem is solved easily using IoT Device Simulator. That's awesome, let's take a closer look at the solution. Let's do it. So can you walk me through the IoT Device Simulator webpage, please? Sure. So I'm on the landing page for the solution. Uh, here you can access and view the architecture diagram for the solution. Uh, you can also access the deployment guide for the solution or, you know, the instruction manual for how to use the solution. Uh, there's also a link to the source code for the solution from here. And of course, you'll have a link to the CloudFormation template through which you can deploy the solution in your AWS account and start using it. So can you bring up the architecture diagram for me? Let's walk through what's happening as part of this solution. All right, so I've loaded up the architecture diagram here. Let's go over through this design. So when customers deploy the solution, it's gonna basically set up your IoT device simulator UI. This is a static website that's hosted on an Amazon S3 bucket, and there's also gonna be an Amazon CloudFront, which provides the CDN network for you, and it's also gonna restrict public access to the contents of your S3 bucket. So what is Amazon Cognito doing as part of the architecture? So Amazon Cognito user pools basically helps you and manage user access to the UI and you know helps you manage who should access what and also to help you add or remove users to access the UI. Cool, so lots and lots of microservices going on as part of this architecture. What are they doing and how are they invoked? So we have the Amazon API Gateway, which is going to manage the endpoint for the UI, and this is going to invoke these AWS Lambda functions or microservices whenever customers make any changes on the UI. And what are some of the example microservices that are running? Probably the most important microservice here is the device microservice, which is going to help users manage the CRUD operations, which is basically you know your create, read, update, delete on any of your devices or your device types and it's also going to help you start and stop the simulations. So are there any other types of microservices that may be running? Yeah, so we have uh, another microservice called the metrics microservice, which is going to aggregate all this information about all the simulations that are being run across your devices, and it's going to show it on the UI in a metrics tab. So that this microservice holds the business logic for it. Okay, cool. So what happens when you actually start a simulation as part of the UI? Uh, so when you start a simulation, it's going to invoke the device microservice, which is going to send a request to your Amazon Simple Queue service, or SQS. This basically provides your asynchronous messaging between all of your microservices, as well as your simulation engine. Okay, cool. And where are the simulations actually being run? So the simulations are basically run on Amazon Elastic Containers, and in the back end, it's using AWS Fargate, which is basically a serverless compute engine to manage and run your containers. Oh, that's pretty cool. So lots of these simulations now running, generating lots of data. What are we doing with the data that that's actually generated? Yeah, so we have a D Amazon DynamoDB table, which is going to store all this data about you know, your devices that you created, your device types, as well as all the simulations that were run. It's going to be the persistent storage for all of this information. Oh, pretty cool. So we have this UI. Can you walk us through a demo of what it looks like, please? Sure. So I've deployed the CloudFormation template and I've set up the instructions to set up the UI. So here you can use this to you know, add and update your device types, the widgets, as well as any of your connected vehicle fleet of devices. So let's go over to the device types and start from here. Okay, what kind of devices can we start setting up? So you can create any type of device that you want for your simulation purpose, for your business need. So I've created, you know, humidity sensor or pressure sensor, but you can add anything. What device type do you want, Rob? Um, I love my dogs. Let's do something that'll help integrate IoT with like a doggy cam. <laughs> what? Okay. I've never heard of that one, but let's do that. Doggy cam sensor. Perfect. All right. So let's create the device type. Now, the next step is to create widgets. 
to associate with the device type and to start your simulations. So let's go over to that. Okay, cool. How many can we start up? So you can create and start up to 100 devices at a time for your simulation. So let's uh, select a device type, your doggy cam sensor, uh, and maybe, you know, let's start simulating 10 of them at a time. So it's pretty easy. Then you, you define the type, and then you just set up and, and generate as many as you need. Yep, exactly. And it's going to continue to run uh, from here when you start your simulation and send data to your AWS IoT endpoint. That's pretty cool. And talk to me about the dashboard you mentioned earlier as part of the microservices. What kind of data are we collecting and how we, can we visualize it? Sure. So your dashboard is basically going to be the point where all this information about all the simulations are going to be aggregated. And it's going to tell you, you know, the total simulations that were run across uh, however many number of device types that you created, as well as how long it took for all of these simulations to run. And you can also look back to you know six months of you know how many simulations were run. Um, you can also add you know a connected fleet of devices using automotive uh, option over here. So you can uh, create and add a vehicle and you know start simulating for you know up to hundred vehicles at a time. So that is another thing that's also going to show up on the dashboard. Oh, that's pretty cool. Well, thanks for walking us through IoT Device Simulator. I appreciate it. Thanks, Rob. That was IoT Device Simulator, a solution that provides a web-based UI for customers to easily manage a fleet of connected devices that sends data to IoT services. As a result, you'll be able to test seamlessly your IoT applications with reduced costs and increased productivity. So go ahead and innovate faster with IoT Device Simulator solution and check out our other solutions on AW Solutions page. Thank you.